there's uh, research that half of all households are unhappy with the uh, city and the people who do things on televisions. Yeah. Remember last night, you remember he hearing him say, television remains. Okay, if you would, uh, so uh, when we go back and look at the tapes, we'll know who's on them. Give, tell me, give me your name and uh, title. Sure, Howard Lincoln, uh, chairman of Nintendo of America in Redmond, Washington. Okay. Um, uh, let me ask you first, uh, how fast is technology changing in, in electronic games? It's changing very rapidly, much more rapidly in the past. We're seeing new generations of uh, video game hardware and software entering the market at a much more rapid pace. How much more rapid? People talk about, you know, computers, you get a new generation every 18 months, maybe every 12 months. Well, it's, it's difficult to put a number on it because it is so dependent upon the quality of the software. For example, the Nintendo Entertainment System, which is an 8-bit system that we're retiring at this show, we've had a run of 10 years. Uh, the Super NES still has tremendous life in it. That's a 16-bit platform, as we demonstrated with the sales of Donkey Kong Country. Over 2.5 million here in the United States in a four-week period were sold. Uh, Ultra 64, our new Nintendo 64-bit uh, platform, uh, we expect to launch that in the fall of 1995. That is an extremely powerful platform. We would anticipate that that platform would be uh, in the market for a number of years. Certainly, uh, Nintendo always plans to keep these hardware platforms in the market for five to ten years. Tell me, um, in, in, in a way that uh, the regular consumer can understand the difference between 16-bit and 64-bit. Well, it's not a, a multiple of 16. 64-bit, uh, the, the product that we are developing with Silicon Graphics right now, will have the processing power of more than four IBM PC 486 PCs put together. We're talking about enormous processing power, so it's not just a, a multiple of 16-bit. A better way for consumers to understand it is this. Nintendo Ultra 64 will offer real-time, on-the-fly, 3D graphics. And those kind of graphics are not yet available in the marketplace but they will be with Nintendo Ultra 64. So you mean you'll get in and it will be almost a virtual reality experience? It will be seamless graphics, absolutely seamless graphics. None of the flickering that, that uh, you've seen in video games in the past. All of that will be gone, seamless. I mean, you know, at the rate we're going, uh, life is going to seem boring compared to what we can get on our television sets. The biggest problem that we have with Nintendo Ultra 64 is to try to figure out how to make great software for a platform that gives us the power to do real-time 3D. And that's something that we're tackling uh, and have been tackling for the last year or so. So we think that the kind of games that the consumer will see on that platform will be absolutely stunning, not like what consumers have seen in the past. And that really is necessary in order for the consumer to be willing to uh, step up to a $250 uh, hardware price point. Consumers are getting much harder to impress, aren't they? Yes, they are. Uh, one of the things that we discovered with uh, the uh, Super NES is uh, when we uh, launched Donkey Kong Country uh, in mid-November, we've sold over six million of those uh, worldwide within a four-week span. What we discovered is now we've set a new level. Now the consumers are going to expect that the next big hit from Nintendo will be even better than Donkey Kong Country. And so we're raising the bar every time we do something uh, as good as Donkey Kong Country. Every, every previous success has to be topped substantially right. then, yeah. And then of course, uh, Nintendo Ultra 64 the software has to be that much better than 16-bit software. Right. Now, uh, tell me about Donkey Kong Country. We launched Donkey Kong Country worldwide in mid-November. Uh, worldwide, we have sold over six million cartridges, representing retail sales of in excess of $400 million within a very short period of time. In six weeks? Less than six weeks. In Japan, 30 days, we sold 2.1 million units. In the United States, approximately 45 days, sell through of 2.5 million units. There is very little Donkey Kong Country out there right now. The retailers are 
are screaming for more. Uh, we anticipate that Donkey Kong Country sales in the United States will be five, six, seven million cartridges before it's all done. Kellogg's is uh, supporting Donkey Kong Country with a, a massive uh, promotional effort in the first half of 1995. We're going to be spending a great deal of more money marketing uh, Donkey Kong Country in the next three to six months. What is it about Donkey Kong Country that makes it so popular? I think it's a combination not only of great graphics, uh, but great gameplay. Uh, it's very easy uh, for most of us adults that perhaps don't play video games to understand, uh, gee, the, the, these are really neat graphics. But that's not what makes a great video game. It's a combination of great graphics, great gameplay, hours of gameplay, and both are, are to be found in Donkey Kong Country. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, Ultra 64. Um, the, the technology, as I understand, uh, 10 years ago would have been astronomically expensive. In the millions and millions of dollars. Yeah, run through that for me, the sort of... Uh... It's fascinating. The, the people at Silicon Graphics estimate that uh, if uh, 10 years ago they were producing the chipset uh, with the kind of power that Nintendo Ultra 64 will have, uh, we would be talking about millions and millions of dollars. Uh, instead, we're talking about a chipset that will go into a hardware platform that will retail for less than $250. That's a tremendous uh, decrease, not only in price, but it's an indication of how technology is, is, uh, is moving so rapidly uh, in, the, in the chip uh, business. Um, Silicon Graphics uh, proprietary technology uh, is embedded in the, the CPU and in the graphics engine of the chipset for Nintendo Ultra 64, and it will allow for true real-time, on-the-fly, 3D graphics. Let me, I want to ask you the, the money question about how much it was a few years ago and how much it is now and get it in a shorter version from you so sure. I make sure that I have something I can use on that. So if you would, just give me the, what it, what it now costs and what it would have cost 10 years ago. I think 10 years ago, the power that will be built into Nintendo Ultra 64 would have cost millions of dollars. Today, that, that same power will be built in a chipset that will be incorporated in Nintendo Ultra 64 hardware that will retail for less than $250. That is amazing, but it's true. Yeah. I need you to leave out some of the stuff in the middle. Okay. And just give me, give me the, the numbers in a short thing, because um, otherwise I know it won't make it with all this stuff, and I want to try to get some of this in, because that is one of the things to me that is most amazing about all electronics, and certainly about this segment of the market, which is the tremendous um, power that you now get for a pittance compared to what it was a few well, years ago. Well, that's really true. Uh, ten years ago, the power in Nintendo Ultra 64 would have cost in the millions and millions of dollars. Today, that power is now less than $250. Perfect. Perfect. That's perfect. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate you going <laughs> with me on that. Um, uh, yeah, tell me, uh, I want to get into the CD-ROM versus the TV thing for a moment. Um, uh, and, I, and I hear in other places, too, people saying, well, you know, TV remains the, the, the center of entertainment in the home. What is the, the thinking here, the division between computer-based entertainment and television-based entertainment? Well, I think certainly we're starting to see a convergence in the sense that we're starting to see more and more entertainment software um, on a computer using CD-ROM. Uh, we are going to continue to be pu putting uh, uh, Nintendo uh, on uh, television. Uh, there is a convergence, though. Uh, but at this point, there is a great deal of dissatisfaction with the quality of CD-ROM entertainment software. There is no way of comparing that quality with the quality of video games such as Donkey Kong Country. There is a quantum leap in terms of quality. Yeah, you just can't get that on a CD-ROM at this point. No, and we couldn't put Donkey Kong Country on a CD-ROM and get the kind of quality that you can find on Nintendo Super uh, NES. It's not possible. Is it because the computers won't process the information quickly enough, or does it uh, have something to do with another part of the technology? It's a combination of things, but uh, if we thought that we could put uh, Donkey Kong Country on CD-ROM, we certainly would do so. Right. Mm -hmm. 
might as well have it in every form you can get Absolutely. it out there. Right. Right. Um, uh, let me see. Um, what about uh, do you want to uh, talk for a moment about uh, the James Bond? Uh, what, what, how, what, how will that be for a game? Is it more, is the attraction there more James Bond or is the technology along the Ultra 64 lines? The, the new James Bond uh, cartridge will be a 16-bit cartridge for the Super NES. It's being developed by the people in Rare, England, who developed Donkey Kong Country. So the kind of advanced uh, technology that you see in, uh, graphics technology that you see in Donkey Kong Country will be in these new James Bond cartridges. The first game will be um, uh, GoldenEye, which is the same title as the uh, movie that Pierce Bronson is uh, starring in and that will be released in November of 1995. We anticipate that a GoldenEye cartridge for Super NES will be available uh, shortly after the release of the movie worldwide. Yeah. Well, that'll be a, a nice combination there for you. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, anything else, Rick? Great, you guys are going to give me an opportunity to eat that yogurt. That's neat. That's right, That's absolutely. It. You get a moment to have breakfast. <laughs> Good. Uh, do we need, are we okay on, do we need two shot or anything? Or? Years, you didn't have to worry about any of this stuff. It was uh, much easier. And You sound like you have a Texan, Texas accent. I do, as a matter of fact. I grew up in uh, Fort Worth. That's I've been gone Worth for 20 accent. years, but I was back recently, so I refreshed my accent. <laughs> Every time I go see my family, I, uh, you know. You're, you're based in New York? Uh, Washington. Washington. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. We have just 10 seconds of Jim talking to you, sir. Okay. And we'll be back. Yeah, I, I grew up in Texas and then um, uh, went to Washington in 1981 and worked there for nine years, covering the White House mostly for National Public Radio. Oh, is that right? And then I went to Los Angeles for three years to do a program called Marketplace, a daily program about money and business and consumer issues and that sort of thing. And then just moved. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
this way, you bring it down to get it to a playing level, then this adjusts as well. This will adjust up, and then this will be... Like of uh, these two, which one? seven years but uh, only in the last year and a half was the manufacturer uh, made possible instead of using gunpowder we now use uh, air to expel the two cartridges so as a consumer item it is available without you, you do not need a license uh, we register the unit ourselves with our dealers through our dealer network uh, allows consumers to purchase it immediately provides a zone of safety of up to 15 feet away from you uh, there's a backup system that should you have two attackers, we provide it for that. The cartridges are a one-time use. You just snap them in and it will protect you by firing out two of the uh, air cartridges. The uh, probes go out 15 feet. They carry a signal called a T-wave. That T-wave attacks the binary nerve signal of your body and it drops the assailant instantly to the ground. He's no longer able to function. He's no longer able to use his arms or legs. He'll be out unconscious for anywhere from 1 to 15 minutes, giving you ample time to escape, leave the scene, call the police, let them come and arrest the person. Yeah, you were telling me that it works sort of like jamming radar. Explain that to me. Well, basically, when we attack the nervous system, what we're doing, the nervous system is a, a series of electrical impulses that are all across your body. And we've matched that signal. We call it a T-wave. And that signal then blacks it out or, or clouds it out, just like radar jamming in effect. So the signal that your brain is giving you is dispelled. It doesn't know what to do. You therefore just collapse and go to the ground. It's totally non-lethal. When you wake up, there are no long-term side effects from it whatsoever. In over 27 years of use by not only the police in this country and in other places, it's totally non-lethal. Now explain the, the radar part to me again, that it's like jamming a radar. Um... All right. Your, your body is consi consists of basically two electrical signals. One works your heart, the other one works your nervous system. You've seen it like on an EKG machine where they get an electrical impulse. We match that signal el electronically through the power handle. That power handle then sends it out through the wire, a very thin copper wire called T-wire, and it goes to the body through the use of the probes. Instantly, that signal then clouds out because it jams it. It's tweaked just enough to the side so it, it's not exactly the same thing. The body doesn't know what to do. It's being overpowered by another signal, very similar to what it normally uses. And so all your limbs and all your, your extremities fail to operate properly. You go to the ground. It's, it's an unconscious movement on your own. But you, you were telling me that it's, it's uh, tell me how it works just like radar, because I think people understand that analogy. Well, radar, of course, sends out a signal, and it, it works on the basis of bouncing back. The, the length of time that it, that it takes to bounce back and the degree in which it bounces back tells somebody where radar is. Uh, while your body doesn't give out a signal uh, telling other people where it is, it emanates all through your body and tells your limbs what to do. And so we go to the, to the nervous center of your body, like uh, the command center of your body, and we block out that command center so it can't send signals out. So we're jamming the body That's just like correct. you... Absolutely correct. Right. I, need you, I need you for you to say that for me. It just jams yes. like radar. It seems just like radar jamming. We just jam it and uh, knock out the command center that you normally have in your body, which tells your arms and legs what to do. Okay. Um, anything else, Rick? I think that's it. Great. Good. What does it sell for? The unit uh, comes in a complete kit. It has a 30-minute uh, video for instructions, a book. It has the power handle, two of the cartridges, as well as a practice target, and it retails for $250. Okay. Practice target is the, the circular target of... Uh, practice target. I saw one in the video, oh, I right, think. Right, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Right. Also a lovely storage case. Yes. <laughs> and that's, you can carry it just like you this? You can carry it. It's uh, very similar to a uh, cellular phone. In fact, we advise people to walk around with it if they're in a dark garage late at night. Uh, 
duplicating what a cellular phone would be because now it's in your hand and ready to use. You just snap it off, arm it just by putting on the light instantly and then firing it. And if I was to have a live cartridge in here, it would fire out. I need some more of that. Do it a little bit, let me get a close up. Yeah. It'll go on again. We'll go on again. See, the signal goes on, on and off for 30 seconds automatically. Okay? Good. Good. Great. Thank you very much. I Thank appreciate you. it on in water. You have that as uh, <laughs> well as some of the others. We can, you know. Okay. You want to hold one? Uh, no, I don't think so. I'll probably have you hold it. That's probably better. Yeah, I mean, this is interesting because it seems to me that, you know, one of the things that's on people's minds uh, this year and, you know, when, over more many years. More people have been killed uh, uh, by random acts of violence, especially in, uh, uh, in inner cities where, they, you know, you don't want to carry a gun. You don't want to uh, be part of that crowd uh, right, that, right. that contributes to the death of anybody. But, and but, this is an opportunity to have a device that provides a zone of personal safety, not only for yourself, but for your wife and your family. Right. If you've got a daughter away at school or something like that, this is an opportunity for her to carry something that is totally non-lethal, right. easy to use. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's interesting because now with people worried about crime so much, you look at electronics industry as often, if it's not trying to create a need, it's trying to fill one, meet one, to uh, provide a service that people are looking for. zone of defense of 15 feet. So at 15 feet you can fire and you knock somebody down and you don't have to get anywhere near them or dance with them. That's the, the best part about this one. Listening to what Malcolm was saying, he also indicated that there's a back. Do this in front of this now because it's done that. In addition, should you miss or not have any ammunition with you, in front of this one right now. You can have the stun gun operate either in this mode, like that, go fire. It'll also function if you don't have any ammunition with you. And this runs for 30 seconds, so you could drop this weapon after you hit some of the taser. Leave the area, get out of a dangerous situation, place this on the ground, it does all the work for you. If you lose this, we'll replace this for free with the self-defense report. It's father of the You're saying an assailant is on the ground, you could actually leave it there while it continues to zap them. That's right. We're buying you time to get out of a dangerous situation. That's the best part about it. You fire it, you leave, get out of a dangerous situation, follow through support, call 911. 